Certainly there's some things that he's done well, but the magnitude of what he's done has been an unmitigated disaster. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content. Yeah, I won't get into his private meetings. As always, I appreciate the likes, shares, and the subscribes. So feel free to keep them all coming. I appreciate them all. A lot of people don't know that. Now, we live in very divided times, my friends. You follow this guy. He capture different moves. Listen to that guy. Despite these obstacles, Karen. Listen to this person. But wait, there's more. Or that one. You don't have to tell me what kind of answers do you think I get when I invite a buddy out for a beer on Mondays. <laughs> Regardless of your leaning, right now is a time of choice. But I have just one question for you. Are you ready to get the lowdown on Jasper Johns? I'll do it one more time, but that's it. Well, of course you are, so here we go. One of the founders of pop art and minimalism was an artist from Allensdale, South Carolina, the legend Jasper Johns. All his life he wanted to be an artist. Now he had no idea what it was to be an artist, but he liked the idea of getting out and doing something different in comparison to the environment that he was currently in. After graduating from high school, he went into the army where he was stationed in Japan. Studied for a short time at the University of South Carolina before venturing off to New York in 1952. Obviously the center of the art world at that moment. Then in fact, that's when things began to change. Now what do I know? I color for a living. But I know that Jasper Johns is a very influential artist when it comes to pop art. This is where he and Robert Rauschenberg began to lay the foundation for what pop art was to become. After a visit to see Marcel Duchamp's ready-mades in Philadelphia, he was inspired to create everyday images. His primary subjects became things like targets, flags, maps, numbers, the alphabet, and so forth. Like many artists at that time, Jasper Johns was really fascinated with optics, and he was using art and color as a form of creating optical illusions. Here's what I'm talking about. One of my favorite of these works is his flags. This work is unique because it uses the physical stress of the colors that force the viewer to see what the artist wants you to see. The green, orange, black stress the eye. And so if you stare at this and then you look at the one below, you will see a red, white, and blue flag. Let's look at this again in another way. An enlargement of an orange, green, black flag Stare at that for just a moment or two, and voila! This has absolutely no color. The saturation of color has been taken out. It's a perfectly black and white image, but you see a red, white, and blue flag. Let us rethink old assumptions and open our hearts and minds to possible and possibilities. Now, I'm going to tell you that good art has absolutely nothing to do with money. However, my students are often shocked with the prices that great art can bring. In 2005, a small flag painting collage by Jasper Johns sold for $4.5 million. The oranges, how it started. It's sometime scorned that I, the truth, which is that one night I dreamed I painted a large American flag, and the next morning I got up and I went out and bought materials to begin it. A drawing, zero through nine, broke records for an artwork that is created on paper with a sale of 10.9 million. Now critics say he gets a little too complicated in his older age, and he is at his prime at his best when he is at his most simple involved in the making, but not involved in the judging of it. As stated, Johns is truly at his best when he is less specific with an idea. This is a case where less is more. 
His newer works are more complicated and somewhat all over the place, really, especially in terms of their organization. And you know who knows it better than anybody else? The Democrats know it better than anybody else. Go ahead. His work was included in a group exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art, and his career exploded into international fame. Johns has also been very successful as a sculptor, with his sculptures that also reflect the everyday life sort of items. When uh, Duchamp uh, made his cage of uh, marble cubes that looked just like sugar lumps, representing or fashioning what could easily be duplicated, and fashioning it in a traditionally artistic material like marble, and making marble look like an industrial product like sugar cubes. Uh, John's followed him by casting a flashlight or a beer can in bronze, and then painting them, in some cases, to look identical, or uh, a can, uh, coffee can filled with paintbrushes, uh, casting it in bronze, and then carefully painting it so you couldn't tell the difference between the bronze version and the real version. Well, all that, the point of all that is supposed to be the point. Because in America, your life is yours to chart. Over the years, he was always open to altering his style and experimenting with new ideas. Because of his ability to make everyday items somewhat unique, Johns is considered by many to be the greatest living artist today, although that's somewhat debatable and somewhat uh, in the moment, so to say. Do you want to call him? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. He currently creates about a painting or two a year, as well as a few drawings, and I even had a pet parrot named after him. So he must be pretty fantastic. Oh man, I love that story. <laughs> Well, it is what it is because you are who you are.